Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is Introduction to Microprocessors Internet Course. And we're using the book called Design Embedded Systems with uh, Pick Microcontrollers, Principles and Applications, Second Edition with Tim Wilmshurst. <coughs> we're going to be working on Chapter 4, Sections 4.7 and 4.8. We're going to introduce this, some assembly move commands and this, talk a little bit more about the assembly bit clear and bit set commands. The three commands we're going to learn today are move w to f, move f, and move literal to w command. And these are the formats of the commands. The command has a uh, mnemonic and then a file register. This one has the mnemonic and then the file register and the di direction bit. This one has the mnemonic and then the uh, literal value. Okay, so here's a, a pictorial description of how the commands work. The move literal to w command takes a literal value um, that you put in your code and, and it transfers it from your uh, flash memory, your uh, program code, to the actual w register. So for example here, move literal w, if I type this command and put say a value of say 23, it's going to take that 23 and it's going to, to move it down through this path and it's going to store it into the W register here, 23. The next command we're going to talk about is, uh, so that gets a literal value into the W register. The next command is the, a value that gets the, a command that gets the value out of the W register. So move WF would take that value and store it into a file location. So let's say for example we had a file address location 28 for example. If we say move WF to 28 it's going to take whatever's in W register and it's going to, uh, yes, well, I'm sorry, it's going to go this direction <laughs> uh, into the file register. So it would take this 23 value and store it at location 28 if we type this command. And then the final command, um, the move F command has a file register and a data direction or a data direction register bit. So you can get two commands out of this one command, and the way it works is it takes uh, the file, uh, some, it takes a value from a file register, for example f, let's just call this location maybe 10, for example. Let's say there's a value of, I don't know, 43 here at, at location 10 in the file registers. So if we type move, move f and then 10, to zero, so when the data direction bit is zero, it's going so zero means uh, to the W register. That's what the data direction bit means. So when the D is a zero, the data gets captured into the W register. When it's a one, it goes to the file register. So this little zero tells you uh, where to put the data. So it's going from file register ten in this case. Ten comma zero means from this ten location, which has a value of forty three and it's going to store it into uh, this W register. So it's going to go kind of like that. So it's going to go this direction through the ALU, through the data, the bit direction, the data direction bit location uh, into the W register. So that value will be written over with uh, 43. 43. <coughs> Now if you do the move f, f to d command, it doesn't really do anything. It, it really just takes the value um, from the file register and copies it back into itself, so it's really not a very useful command. So move f, so let's say example maybe 21. If we say move f uh, 21 uh, to 1, so when the data direction bit is a 1, it's going to just copy it back to itself. So you can see the path is just going to be from here and it's going to come back to itself. Um, or in this case it's going to come like this through here through the J direction bit back to itself but it does affect the zero bit on the status register so that, that is sometimes useful to be able to evaluate um, a register. So let's say that this was had a value of uh, 1, 5 um, so or maybe it had a value of zero, so you could do that command to evaluate if that was zero. So it, this is this command is not really that useful. The main commands we want is we want to be able to, to move 
a literal value that we type in the code. We want to move it into the W register. We want to be able to move a value in the W register to the file registers, which is the move WF command. And then we want to move a value from the file registers back to the W register. So now with these three commands, we have the ability to move data in any direction we want. So now that we've added those three move commands, we've added this one and this one, and we previously talked about these others. So all the ones with the stars have are commands that we've uh, learned about. So we're going to go through all these commands eventually and try to learn each and every command. Um, also, we learned last time about the bit set and bit clear command. Just to overview, uh, the bit clear f is just going to simply uh, clear. Remember, we we say clear uh, means set. Uh, change to a zero and then set means change to a one. So this is the bit clear f, this is the bit set f. You just put the file uh, address here so and then you put uh, the bit that you want to set or clear. So um, if you have a number 1110111 if you do a bit clear on this bit it's going to change that one to a zero. And then if you do a bit set on this zero, it's going to change it to a one. That's the way it works. And the F just tells you the, the file address location. And then the move literal to W command is the command we just learned. Um, and the rest of the commands we should have already learned. Um, so we've got quite a few commands now that we can use. And now we're going to look at a practical example of how to use these commands in a program called a ping pong data move. This program is not the actual ping pong game that we uh, built, but it's going to be just uh, a simple data move command. So don't let the ping pong uh, kind of confuse you there. This is just a simple data data move command, which is different than the, uh, the actual ping pong game that we built. So the way this com the way this program works is this is example 4.5. What it does is um, remember we have remember our uh, special function registers we had uh, bank 0 and we had bank 1 and remember we had a port A and then we had tris A it was in bank 1 okay remember this was in location 5 in location 6 we had port B and then we had tris B okay so we had port B and then we had tris B. Now, and remember that this the equate command we learned was a similar directive. So what this does, it simply just sets the, the text status equal to 3. So anytime you type the word status from now on, it's just going to be looked at as being equal to 0, 3. So that's what the equate command does. The same for the port A command. Uh, for the port A, you say equate and then 0, 5. So equate is this a similar directive that tells this assembler when it when it, it tells a program when it reads this to anytime you type port A it's just going to replace that value with equal to 5, 0, 5. Okay? So you see all these equate commands. We're setting tris A equal to 5 as well. Okay, we want port A and port and tris A both be equal to 5 and is basically those both those commands just point to to 5, point point to this location and then you have to use the bank select to, to figure out if it's either tris A or port A. It's kind of a weird kind of nuance in the PIC microcontrollers. It's kind of annoying, but um, you just have to kind of get used to that. And then port B, of course, is location 6. So we have so we have all of our equate statements. Then the or command is going to tell you where where is this program going to be placed in memory. So you have... Um, so these are your file registers over here. What's called FR, file registers. And this is your program data. Program data. Uh, this is your flash memory. Uh, and th this is like your SRAM, SRAM data. But anyway, you have your your program starts uh, when you have a reset on your chip, on your device. Let's say that this is your device here. Let's say this is a 16F84. You have some port A up here, you have your port B down here, then you have your reset comes out of here. Well, every time you get a reset, it starts off at, at location zero. So this org command is saying, okay, set the program counter equal to zero, 
And then when you start typing your code here, bit set f, then the first command is going to be bit set f. Your next command is going to be move literal to w. It's not going to actually be that text, it's actually going to be the binary machine code for that. But that's what that command, that org command does. So the org command sets your origin. So then we're going to use this uh, label here, start, which doesn't really have any effect on the program. It's just a label. Um, actually, what it does is start gets, gets the value of zero in this case because bit set f is your first line. And it's going to be at location zero. And so your uh, start is just going to be a label that's going to be set to zero, but it's not really used for anything, just uh, a naming convention. So your first actual command is bit set f status 5. Now status equals 3. So status just gets replaced with this in the it just gets replaced with uh, 3 to the assembler. So really the command is bit set f 0 3 5. And we know that 0 3 is the status register. So remember we have uh, 0 3 and we have a status register. And remember the status register bit 5 of the status re register is your bank select bit. So it's going to allow us to select this bank 1, okay? Bank 1 is going to be set. And now the next command is going to be move literal to W. So we're going to move, this is the literal value, it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And we're going to move that to the w, w register. So let's just call this our W register. It's going to move that value to the W register. Okay, and why are we doing that? Because the next command says move WF to trist A. So now that value of 00011000 is going to be moved to trist A. And the only reason it gets moved to trist A is because we set the bit select bank to 1. And we did that previously. Because otherwise, uh, this trist A just equal the trist A value up here, if you look here, just equals the value of 5. So, um, that's this row 5 so it could have went to port A or TRIS A but because we had the bank select bit set to 1 then it went to TRIS A so don't forget to set your memory bank select bit um, so what that did was it set um, bits 0, 1, and 2 of port A it set them to outputs and then set bits uh, 4 and 5 to inputs okay so you can imagine uh, one, two, three, four. I can't actually remember on the chip which ones are four and five, but let's just let's just say that zero, one, two, three, and four. So zero, one, and two is going to get output. Zero, one, two, and then three and four is going to be an input. So three and four. We'll, we'll just call these three and four. So these are getting set as an input. So we can put maybe a push button switch on here or something. We can put a switch here. Maybe on those bits, that looks like a MOSFET, but let's just say that that's a switch. Okay, let's just call it switch 1, switch 2. So now those are inputs. Okay, now now that we've got the, the port A set up, we've got it set up as we have two of these bits are inputs and the rest of them are outputs. And we're going to try to set up the port B. So port B is down here. These are our port B. Uh, let's just say 0, 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven. Uh, so that's our port B over here down the bottom of the 16F84. Now we're going to move literal to, literal to W of zero. So we're going to take uh, zero and we're going to store it into the W register. That's what this command does. Store zero in the W register. Now the next command moves this W value into trist B. So what that does, it moves it into TRIS B, which sets the TRIS B, the port B, it sets it into all outputs. Because 0 means output, uh, 1 means input. Okay? So when we're setting up these ports, 1 means input, uh, and then 0 means output. 0 means out. Okay? So it's going to set the port B to all outputs. Now we're going to bit clear f status register bit 5. Now what that's going to do is it's going to set us back on bank 0 because we want to stay in bank 0 during normal code operation because we're going to be wanting to write read and write to port a and b. So once we get that we only set the, the direction the trist a registers and trist b we set those up one time we don't have to change those anymore and then from that point on we're going to be just reading and writing uh, to port a and b. So now that selects bank 0. So we selected bank 1 we set those up then we went back to bank 0. 
now we, we start our main program here. Um, and the first command is move literal to w0. So we move 0 and we move this value in our code to the w register, which is already 0, so that command doesn't really do anything useful. Next command is, this is a command we just learned today, move wf port a. So we're going to move uh, this value of 0 into port a. Okay, so this 0 goes to port a. So really that just sets all the outputs to 0. Of course the inputs it won't do anything to, but it sets the outputs to 0. And then we're going to move w to f to port b. So that then sets all these b outputs to 0. Okay, so externally it sets all those outputs to 0. Now, notice that uh, the next command, notice that we have a label here again. In the, when, you, when you type in something at the very first location, it sets it as a label. So what is, what is this label equal? Uh, the label equals the number uh, in the line of code that you're in. So notice that this is location 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. So since we're at ninth location, you can see your code is going to get in, is going to be right here in the flash in, in all these memory locations. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So loop is actually going to be set to value of nine. So that's all that the uh, uh, this command is going to do. This loop value just gets the value of nine. Um, so that's the first thing that happens. And then the command, the move f command. What does it do? Well, the move f command takes. Um, we learned about this command just recently. So it takes the value in port A and it moves it to the, to the W register. So the value in port A, so basically it's going to read these switches on 3 and 4 and it's going to copy it into the W register. Okay, so whatever these switches are set to, those two bits, it's going to move to the W register. Then the next command, which is at location 10 in the flash memory, is going to move W to S. So it's going to take this, these values that you just read into the switches into the W register. Now it's going to move that into port B. So it moves into port B, which basically outputs those values onto the, the port B, uh, number 3 and 4. So now those values are going to show up on port B. So really what, what this code really does is just reads the value of these switches in, on the on A port and, and sends them back out onto the B port. So that's all this program really does. It just transfers data from the A port to the B port. Um, so now we did that. Now at your instruction 11, location 11 up here in your program memory, it says go to loop. So it's just going to, now we know that loop has a value of 9. So really it's just going to go back up to 9. Or in this case it goes to the loop. So um, it just repeats this, this instruction of moving um, move F, move the port A values to the W register and then moves those those values from the W register back to the B register or the port B. So it just loops, it just reads these values on port A and then copies them back to port B. So it just continuously does that. And that's all the program does. And then the end statement doesn't really get implemented in your code. It doesn't actually get assigned a line number. It just tells, it, it's an assembler directive, it just tells the assembler to stop uh, execute, to stop translating your code. Okay, so it's really, it's really just used for the MP Lab program to tell it uh, to stop, basically. Stop uh, uh, trying to disassemble this code. Or assemble this code, That I mean. Um, so that's about it. Um, so that's a pretty simple just data transfer program using all the move commands that we have. Look over this code, uh, try to simulate it in the MP Lab X simulator, and try to see what's going on there as best as you can. And... Um, I thank you for watching this lesson and I'll see you for the next lesson. Thanks.